Once again, dear viewers, you're watching ERI TV. Welcome to our news broadcast. First, a quick look at the major stories making top headlines tonight. 102 patients diagnosed positive for COVID-19 in tests carried out today. Seminar held to nationals on domestic affairs in Switzerland. Coronavirus cases continue to drop in China. And Russia-led military bloc begins pulling troops out of Kazakhstan. Announcements from the Ministry of Health. 102 patients have been diagnosed positive for COVID-19 in tests carried out today at quarantine centers and testing stations in the central, southern and northern Red Sea regions. Out of these, 94 patients are from quarantine centers and testing stations in Asmara, central region. Five patients are from testing stations in Dwarwa and uh, Mandafara, southern region. Three patients are from quarantine centers in Massawa, northern Red Sea region. On the other hand, 48 patients who have been receiving medical treatment in the hospitals in the central and southern regions have recovered fully and have been discharged from these facilities. Sadly, 84-year-old patient in the central region has passed away due to the pandemic. The total number of recovered patients has accordingly increased to 8,164, while the number of deaths has risen to 85. The total number of confirmed cases in the country to date has increased to 8,755. Ministry of Health, Asmara, 13 January 2022. Eritrean nationals in Switzerland held discussion focusing on the role and contribution of nationals in national affairs, explaining in detail the external conspiracies that Eritrea has been facing aimed at disrupting the national development drives as well as the peace and cooperation prevailing in the region. Mr. Adam Osman Chaje Defer at the Eritrean Embassy called on nationals to reinforce organization and participation in the national affairs indicating that strong organization and unity is one of the noble values of Eritrean people. Mr. Gabrihiwa Tesfai, head of public and community affairs at the Eritrean Embassy, called for strength and participation for better outcome. The participants on their part expressed resolve to strengthen participation, as in the past, in the national affairs. They also contributed $52,000. At an activity assessment meeting, the Ministry of Education branch in the Gash Parker region conducted in Baruntu, call was made for integrated effort on the part of all stakeholders to develop school performance of students. According to Ms. Silas Asmalash, Head of National Examinations Follow-up, in 2020-2021 academic year, 52.8% of the 8,466 students that took 8th grade national examination have scored passing marks. Mr. Habte Asfaha, head of National Examinations Unit at the branch office on his part, called on the students, parents, school community and the public to reinforce participation in the effort being exerted to develop the overall school performance of students at all levels, indicating that the results registered by students at the 8th grade national examination attests to attention given and the effort exerted to strengthen the school performance of students Mr. Mohammed Ali Ibrahim, head of the Ministry of Education branch in the region, called for integrated effort for better outcome. Calling for addressing their challenges being encountered in the teaching learning process, Ambassador Hamad, Mohammed Ali Harui, governor of the region, called for strength and contribution of the public. The participants on their part called for the reinforcement of the relationships between students, parents and teachers, as well as for organizing supporting programs that could help develop the performance of students. That was our domestic news. Please stay tuned for the international right after the short break. Life in Xi'an and Yan'an, two major cities in northwest China's Shaanxi province, is gradually resuming to normal as daily new COVID-19 cases continue to drop in the recent resurgence of the coronavirus. 
After more than 20 days in lockdown due to an outbreak of COVID-19 infections, Xi'an, the worst hit city by the virus, is allowing some businesses of daily necessities to reopen. On Wednesday, the city allowed vendors selling essential supplies to reopen in five districts and counties, which means over 70% of stores in the city resumed operation. Catering enterprises are receiving takeout orders, albeit with the in-person dining remaining suspended. The supply of postal and express delivery services has also resumed. In Yan'an, which is about 300 kilometers north of Xi'an, stores and banks, barbershops and bus service started reopening their doors today after the authorities lifted the 12-day restrictions against the COVID-19 pandemic. A Russia-led military bloc began pulling its troops out of Kazakhstan today after a week-long deployment during the worst bout of unrest in the Central Asian nation's post-Soviet history. Kazakh President Qasim Jomart Takayev asked for assistance from the Collective Security Treaty Organization, the CSTO, last week after initially peaceful protests triggered by a sharp increase in car fuel prices turned violent in many big cities. The Kazakh authorities announced the completion of what they called an anti-terrorist operation in most of the country yesterday, although they had yet to declare its biggest city, Almaty, fully secure. It was unclear how many troops out of 2,500 sent in by the CSTO were leaving immediately. The alliance has said the peacekeeping contingent could take 10 days to fully withdraw. CSTO troops were first deployed to government buildings in the capital city of Nur Sultan, away from the centers of unrest and later guarded some key infrastructure objects in Almaty, such as large power plants. The authorities have detained almost 10,000 people over the unrest in which some protesters attacked security forces, captured and tortured torched government buildings and looted shops. The protests began as demonstrations against fuel prices rise, but escalated to the storming of public buildings and rioting in the streets in the worst violence in the ex-Soviet Republic has experienced in 30 years of independence. Please sit you now for a recap of tonight's headlines. Hundred and two patients diagnosed positive for COVID nineteen in tests carried out today. Seminar held to nationals on domestic affairs in Switzerland. Coronavirus cases continue to drop in China. Russia led military bloc begins pulling troops out of Kazakhstan. And that was Ernest Fortuna, dear viewers. It is good night from us.